Spyro A Hero's Tale had a variety of different enemies which were cut before the final release. Let's look at these enemies and what is currently known about them. Sharks were meant to inhabit a part of Dragonfly Falls before they were scrapped. They can be found somewhat functional in the demos of the game. As soon as Spyro gets close to them, they will swim after him and try to eat him. Interestingly, in the early demo there are two sharks, while in the late demo there is just one. In the test level, Test Beach, a shark is also seen. Here it will quickly shoot up from below and eat Spyro once he goes too far offshore. This was likely the last version of this enemy before it was scrapped completely. In the once shark infested waters in the final game, a simple fence blocks the way out to sea instead. The mammoth would have worked similarly to the yeti found in the final game. Here is a brief description of this enemy from the design documents. As you can see, many of its features are similar to the yeti. A few models can still be found within the game's files. Mammoth A seems incomplete and it won't appear if you try to force it to load in-game. The textures for it do still exist though. Mammoth B however seems finished and it even has a snowball within its files. The second mammoth model can also be seen in the test level Test KA, where it plays an idle animation. As well as this, they can be spotted in a couple of beta screenshots. One of them seems to have the mammoth A model, while another has the mammoth B model. In Frostbite Village's sound files, a few elephant noises can be found, which might have been used for these mammoth enemies. The big mammoth in the final game rather infamously disappears after your first encounter with it. However, in the game's files, a lot of unused audio files can be found. Which suggests that this mammoth was actually originally the boss of Icy Wilderness instead of Red. This red worm enemy can be found in the test level Test MT. Unlike the blue worm, which appears in the game, this red one is larger and does a roll attack instead of spitting acid. It can only be defeated by hitting it with a bomb, which turns it into a blue worm. For some reason this worm is more pinkish in the GameCube version and redder in the PS2 version. Also found in Test MT, a few spiders can be found which instead of shooting spider webs, shoot acid instead. This acid lingers on the ground, where it can hurt the player if they touch it. Not a whole lot is known about this archer fish enemy. It appears in the concept art and in a design sketch for Dragonfly Falls. Presumably it would have spat water at Spyro while being underwater, similar to the real life archer fish. The less hard enemies are only seen in the first Sparks minigame during the Light Gem challenge. Here they use their tongues to attack Sparks. According to the design documents and beta screenshots, these enemies were actually meant to appear in Spyro's environments as well. They would have tried to eat Sparks, leaving Spyro with one hit point left. Five different critters are seen throughout the game. They are known internally as Crit Tong, Crit Spin, Crit Fire, Crit Drag, and Critter 2. However, there are two more types that remain unused, Crit Charge and Crit Wing. In Test Beach, you can see the Crit Wing enemies flying outside the map. They cannot attack the player, but they do have fully working animations. This Critter type was probably meant for Cloudy Domain, as the design document describe an enemy called Sky Critter in that level. Lastly, in a few gameplay videos, a completely scrapped design for the critters are briefly seen. They're also generating from huts, which is something that they never do in the final game. Despite not appearing in the game, the model and textures for this early design actually still exist within the game's files. The files Nurk Small, Nurk Med, 
and Nurk Large are the three different Nurk types without clothes on. I'm not sure if these would have actually been used as enemies. They might have just been used as a baseline for the other Nurk models. One interesting thing to note is that the medium Nurk is green, whereas he's blue everywhere else in the game. Anyway, that's all I'll cover in this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it interesting.